So I've been using the new Apple Studio display for about a month now, and I have to say I'm really liking it. It might be the same 5K 27 inch non mini LED non ProMotion panel that we've been used to for a number of years now on the iMac, but this package is really hard to argue with. Now, many have rightly pointed out that there are plenty of 4K alternatives, both in this size and larger for significantly less money, but I also agree with those who have pointed out that having a 5K display at 27 inches offers you insane pixel density. It means that you can work in a timeline and still have a high resolution window playing even if it's just a portion of the screen. There are a lot of benefits to going the way Apple has gone here. So what if there was a way to do that for half the price? Well, to find out, I bought this. And what makes that interesting is that this display panel is largely the same as this one. So what if instead of spending $1,600 on the studio display, we convert this iMac into a studio display? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Salutations, it is I, Fancy Luke, here to impart knowledge unto you regarding today's video sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks is enabling fancy people like you or I to invest in blue chip art, an asset class traditionally limited to the uber wealthy who can afford millions of dollars on their investments. Just look at them, they're way too fancy. But now there's another way because Masterworks is allowing regular fancy people like you or I to invest in this highly lucrative asset class. This allows you access to the $1.7 trillion of wealth held in artwork and 900 billion in projected growth by 2026. Contemporary art prices outpaced the S&P 500 total return by 164% from 1995 to 2021, an astonishing result that means you can diversify your portfolio like never before. And so far, Masterworks' three offerings have returned over 30% to its fancy investors. So if you too want to join them, head over to the link in the description below and diversify your portfolio today. And now let's get back to the video. So you want to turn an old iMac into a studio display. How exactly do you go about doing that? Well, let's start by looking at the iMac that I've chosen for today's project. This is the original 5K iMac from 2014, for which I paid a smidge over $600. I spent some time looking around for one with a dead logic board and a working display, but it ended up just making more sense to buy this fully working one for, realistically, only $50 or $100 extra. I'm glad I did though, because this one is pretty much top of the range. It's got a Core i7-4790K, upgraded AMD Radeon R9 M295X graphics, and 24GB of DDR3 RAM. Not bad back in 2014, but today it's not holding up quite as well. It's no longer supported in macOS Monterey, it's got a slow fusion drive, and its power-hungry internals pump out less performance with 300 watts than a current MacBook Air can with 15. It's usable, sure, but these aging components pale compared to the 27-inch 5K panel to which they're attached. Now, the easiest way to use this iMac's display with another Mac is through Luna Display, which acts kind of like Sidecar in a way. However, there are a couple of issues that could arise with that. For one, the iMac that you're using has to, you know, function, and you're also gonna have to deal with connection and latency issues. Now, in the past, you could have used target display mode, but that's no longer possible, so Apple clearly doesn't want you to use this display panel with anything else. But I've never really been one to look at a list of supported devices and features and say, oh well, I guess it's not possible. So what we're gonna do today is convert the actual display panel itself into a plug and play external monitor. In order to pull this off, we're gonna need to gut the old internals of the iMac and replace them with our own. Fortunately, we're not flying blind here. Today's project sponsor, iFixit, has all the resources you could ever need for a project like this, starting with opening up the iMac by its display adhesive. 
I like to use the picks included in the Protect toolkit to make my way around the display. And once that's cut, we can lean the display forward and access both connectors. There's one for the LVDS cable and one for the LED backlight driver. And with that, our 5K panel is free. Once inside this eight-year-old machine, I was greeted with an insane amount of dust. Apple doesn't really make these things easy to clean because you have to literally cut the display off to get inside and they don't really seem to care about dust ingress. So this is the result. You can see the fan is pretty caked up which explains the high temps and chugging performance. We'll give it a bit of a brush before starting the disassembly. Now, for step-by-step -step instructions on removing the guts of the iMac, I'd refer you guys to iFixit's guides on removing the display, speakers, fan, power supply, and logic board. They go through every screw and connector, and I'll have those linked in the description below. The process is pretty much the same for any 27-inch 5K iMac. Removing that dusty fan showed the extent of dust buildup in the machine. It basically looks carpeted at this point. And now we can follow the iFixit guide step by step and remove the guts of the iMac, being especially careful of the exposed traces on the power supply that can cause serious harm if touched. After pulling out the logic board, I found some additional fun, dusty surprises hiding in the chin of the iMac, and even the back of the display accumulated some fun fan-shaped dust sculptures. So now we have an empty shell and our display panel. And obviously this isn't an ordinary display panel with HDMI inputs, so we're going to need an adapter. To find which one you would need for your display, you can find a model identifying label on the back of the panel. Search Google for that number plus conversion board and you should find some results. This is super easy for older 1440p iMac panels, however it was quite tricky to find one that works with the much more advanced 5K ones. Fortunately I came across this eBay seller that has exactly what we need. It supports panels found in the 2014 through 2017 iMacs and has an impressive feature set. We have two HDMI ports that can run 4K resolution, and more importantly, two DisplayPort 1.4 ports that can run full 5K over one connection. It also supports using two DisplayPort signals in tandem if needed by older graphics cards. So let's give it a test run. I wired up the LED driver and the LVDS connection and taped it up roughly on the back of the panel, then connected a USB-C to DisplayPort 1.4 cable and the 12 volt power supply. And then I ran the wires through the back of the case by popping out the RAM access door, which is very convenient for this type of project. And then I loosely taped the display in place just so we could get a test and voila, we have a signal. So we'll finalize and touch all that up in a minute, but since we're building a studio display replacement, I thought it might be a good idea to replicate one feature that I think is pretty valuable, the webcam. Now the iMac of course has one built in, but it's not something we can easily use since the connection is a ribbon cable that combines the camera, microphones, ambient light sensor, and indicator LED. But if we remove the two T4 Torx screws and take this camera out, there's a convenient little cutout that lets us install something such as this, a tiny USB camera meant for Arduino or Raspberry Pi projects, but that's small enough to fit in the thin chassis. I used some double-sided tape to affix the controller board and some electrical tape to hold the camera over the cutout in the display glass. And look at that. We now have a super handy built-in webcam that runs over a simple USB connection built right into the enclosure. With everything now tested and working, I rearranged the cables on the back of the display to keep everything super compact. And now all that's left is to apply iFixit adhesive strips and glue the display back onto the iMac chassis. And with that, our DIY studio display is done. So here is the finished product. 
honestly, I'm very happy with how this came out because for the most part, it looks just like a normal iMac. We're able to attach the display right back on. The only difference that you would actually be able to see is around the back where we have wires coming out from the RAM hatch. Apart from that, it's totally stock. Now, in terms of functionality, let me talk you through the features of this display as an external monitor. First of all, there's the display itself. The late 2014 iMac is missing one thing over the LG Ultrafine 5K, and that's P3 color support. If that's important to you, look out for a donor iMac from 2015 or later. And ideally, if you want the best experience, an iMac from 2017 should be virtually indistinguishable from the LG Ultrafine 5K. Now, in terms of this late 2014 versus the studio display directly, if you put them side by side, you can notice some differences, mainly in black levels and in backlight bleed. You are gonna notice a little bit worse contrast ratio when you're looking at this display, and the 2014 is known to have some issues with image retention. So overall, my advice would be, if you do wanna do a project like this, if you find a 2014 for cheap like I did, that's great, but a 2015 or a 2017 are, are definitely the panels that I would prefer looking at this in hindsight. But when you set that aside and you look at these displays side by side, this being the worst version of this 5K panel, honestly, it's pretty close. We're talking about a display setup here that costs less than half the price of the studio display. That's, that's a huge cost savings. You could buy an entire Mac mini with that difference. And you don't even have to give up that many features compared to the $1,600 studio display. This converter board allows us to access some creature comforts such as the scaling options that you find on native Apple displays. We even have access to Night Shift, which Apple says is only compatible with a handful of first-party monitors. I guess using an actual Apple display panel does have some perks. Now, the little panel around the back that has some buttons on it allow us to do a couple of things, but you don't necessarily need them. So the big ones are you have this menu that allows you to go through and adjust the brightness, contrast, sharpness, and stuff like that. But to be honest, by default, it looks exactly the same as the normal settings in an iMac. So you can just leave that alone, except for maybe the brightness or you could use the buttons to cycle through multiple display connections just like you would in a normal monitor. So it's a very well-rounded display. It works just like any third-party monitor except you're using an actual Apple panel. And that's before we even get to the fact that there's a built-in webcam. That honestly was a very simple thing. It cost me 30 bucks, but it makes a heck of a difference in, in making this really feel like a studio display. Just, Having the webcam built in that runs over a simple USB-C connection, it, it is really nice. All right, so let's talk money. How much did this entire finished product all assembled actually cost? Well, to start off, I paid $620 for the working iMac, and then I spent $179 on the display adapter board. Then we can add 32 for the camera, 12 for the USB-C to display port cable, nine for the USB-A to C extension that I used for the webcam, and $19 for the iFixit display adhesive strips. That brings the total to $871, but we do have to keep in mind that because I bought a fully functioning iMac rather than a broken one, there are some bonuses. Like for example, the mouse and keyboard that came with it that Apple still charges $180 for, so that's definitely a nice bonus. But the biggest thing is that we have the logic board and all of the internal components from this iMac. A quick eBay search reveals that the logic boards from this generation generation machine, even without a CPU or RAM or our high-end graphics, are selling for about $275. So if we extremely conservatively say, all right, let's sell the logic board, 275 bucks, that brings the total cost for this monitor down to $596. And you could bring that down even further by selling the CPU, power supply, RAM, speakers, and whatever other parts you can scavenge from it. So at that point, this is a tremendous value proposition. We're talking about sub $600 for a 5K display that works just like a normal monitor that runs over USB-C even. We got a mouse and keyboard. We have a webcam built in. 
That's awesome. This is a fantastic option if you're willing to be just a little bit handy. As I mentioned at the beginning here, right? There's no modification. We didn't have to drill, we didn't have to weld, we didn't have to solder, nothing like that. All this was done with essentially double-sided and electrical tape, as well as of course, the iFixit Protect Toolkit to take the thing apart. But if you're able to do that, then you're able to do this. And I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about this project in the comments below. Do you think that there is something that you would do to improve this? Would you undertake a project like this to save $1,000 compared to a studio display? Or do you think the studio display isn't actually that poorly priced to begin with? I'm very interested to hear your guys' thoughts, so let me know all that in the comments below. And as usual, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.